we're ready to move on to our commander. We still have five zones occupied and we're looking for that final control cube. We have to go through the event phase, but before that we need to apply Toxin's effect and retire a general steel copy and sandbar. Let's see what our new event will be. That's not a Venom Strikes. A day member. Celebrations worldwide commence on March 10th, the end of World War III. As a revelry is celebrated, it seems as though no one on Earth is interested in committing ill will on their fellow man. All is quiet. Let's see who we will add to our squad. We get two for the recruit, one for the hornet, one for caliber, that's four, two more for specter to make six, and hollow point gives us three for nine. I have nine available, and the only desirable one is the avalanche vehicle that costs five. But I think I will go the route of the Hornet and use it in the recruitment phase to spend five to place a top card from the recruitment deck into my discard pile and take my chances there. And maybe I can get a better card. And we will get Caliber. I already have a copy of Caliber in my hand right now. Well, now we have two. Before I select a Venom Leader to attack, I'm going to use my In the Name of Love card. Once per game, use this card to look at the top three Venom support cards and then return them in any order to the top or bottom. Let's see how many we have here. Well, there are only three left. The Cotton Mouth. Gives plus one to both. Definitely put that on the bottom. The Shadow Fangs. Cancel a successful die. And the Ice Burster adds a health. And if it's in the Arctic, we have to discard a random freedom support. I reshuffled the Venom support deck. And I am choosing to put the two vehicles actually on top of the deck and the Shadow Fangs that cancel a successful die on the bottom. I am choosing to go after Blue Moon, who will begin with three and three with two support. And hopefully things go well, and we don't lose a key part of our team here, because her effect takes place before we choose a combat leader. Discard one random Freedom Squadron soldier from play. We have four soldiers. So I'll roll randomly and one of these four is going to go away. If it's the wrong one, then we may not have a chance to take out Blue Moon. And that is a four. If you can't see it, I'll bring it a little closer. You can see there's four triangles there. And again, this is the triple four. It's one through four, three times on a 12-sided. And the fourth soldier is Caliber. So Caliber is taken out of play by discarding him to my discard pile. And that was best case scenario for us. We can move forward now and choose our leader. I will choose Hollow Point as the leader, even though we're in the Arctic and her abilities are very useful. I have a plan at least, and I hope it works. She'll be supported by one recruit, Spectre, who has this great ability to lower the Venom Leader's health and defense by one. And the Hornet will be in there, but it won't provide any abilities because we are not in an air zone. Hollow Point, we'll get two dice and we get one more for the recruit, giving us only three dice. Blue Moon will get two Venom support. We already know what they are. We have the Cotton Mouth and the Ice Burster, both vehicles. But I am going to use Venom Schematics. In the tactical phase, once per game, use this card to discard up to two Venom support vehicles before their abilities take effect. So both of these support vehicles will go to the discard pile. But Blue Moon does have the Venom support card under her enemy card. 
even though those two support cards are gone, she has another Venom support. And we have the Pythons that are going to add one health. Next we would apply the Freedom Support abilities. And Spectre will lower Blue Moon's health and defense by one, taking her down to two health and two defense. We now must apply the Python's ability to add one health, which will take her up to three. We only have three dice. We need three successes, but her defense is low at two, which means as long as we don't roll any ones, we will defeat Blue Moon. All right, no ones. Nice, a six, a six, and a four. Blue Moon is defeated. But we have to remember, at the end of turn phase, after drawing my new hand, I have to discard two cards at random. But that may not matter if Blue Moon was holding on to that final control cube. No. Stealth Technology. A new experimental jet, the A-166 Ghost, is discovered in Venom's hangar. Reverse engineering proves that the jet is invisible to radar, and Freedom Squadron is able to incorporate the technology. Tactical Phase, once per game, uses this card to give all Freedom Support vehicles in combat this turn the following ability, in addition to any they already provide. Tactical Phase plus one, combat strength. All right, discard Venom Support. We're not refilling the zones. There's nothing to refill in the training ground. I'll discard my hand, draw five new ones. I'm not even gonna look at them because I have to discard two randomly. So let's just give them a quick mix. And the first two will get discarded, which are Striker and Sledge, which will only give me three cards to start, and that will be a Recruit, a Commando, and a Commando. Wow, don't think there's going to be much attacking going on. Hopefully we won't have to come back to this horrible hand if Player 2 can find the Control Cube for us. We'll now move over here to the Recruitment phase, and we have a Commando for one, Predator for one, nothing with Selkie, Sundown with one for three, and Corporal Carnage with two more for a total of five. Five is pretty low, but we do have enough to get the Avalanche vehicle and place it in our discard pile. Let's go big this time. Let's go after Toxin. Toxin will have three health, four defense, and four support. Any Venom support cards that are drawn that are not Scourges or Shadow Fangs will get discarded. Toxin's initial values of 3 and 4 are set. I will choose Predator as my leader with a strength of 4. He'll be supported by one Commando. Corporal Carnage, who will add plus 2 to the rolled value of all combat dice. Selkie which in the combat phase, I can look at the top card from my draw deck and add its value to the rolled value of one combat die. And finally in support, we have Sundown. In Sundown, during the recruitment phase, all cards purchased this turn would be placed on top of your draw deck. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to put the avalanche on top because that's helpful in the snow. And we're going into an own. But the tactical phase in the air zone after a Venom Leader is chosen, place the top two cards from your draw deck into play. So the Venom Leader is chosen. We are going after Toxin, which means we can draw two more cards and put them into play. We're going to have a Recruit, which is fine. That'll add another combat die. And General Steel. That's unfortunate, because this is only good if he's the leader. Now we have everybody in play. Predator gets four dice, and our commando and recruit will get one each. We'll now draw Toxin's support, and remember, if they are not Scourges or Shadow Fangs, they get discarded. First up, we have <laughs> Scourges, great. Lower the combat leaders 
ability by one. Then we have to retire one soldier during the retirement phase. Here we have some wasps. They will be discarded. Ah, good. The Venom Glider will be discarded. And finally, very good. Sea Serpents will also be discarded. We'll apply the Venom Scourge's ability to lower the combat leader's value by one, leaving us with five dice. We are going to need three successes against Toxin with a defense of four. This should not be a difficult win thanks to all of our support cards unless we have an absolutely tragic roll because we're going to add plus two to the rolled value of all combat dice. That one becomes a three, three to five. Six we'll put down here because it's actually an eight. The four is a six and the two is a four. We needed values of four or higher, and we have four successes. We only needed three. We do have to do Selkie's ability, where we look at the top card of my draw deck and add its value to the rolled value of one combat die. And it has a value of five. It's hardcore. So we would add five to a value of one of those dice. I'll just add it to the three to make that an eight and have all five dice be successes. Toxin. Oh no, I forgot. Toxin has another card under there. Oh no. Oh, it was Sea Serpents. Nothing to worry about. Although the ability says discard all Venom support cards drawn. Is that one considered drawn? That card said place one Venom support card face down by each Venom leader in play. The support card will be used in addition to any other Venom support cards the leader draws during their next combat. That card was placed and not drawn, so I don't think that tactical phase ability takes place, which would have raised the health by one and made it a four but that did not skew the outcome because we had all five dice successful. So Toxin will go to the victory point pile and we'll see if Toxin was hiding our control cube the entire game. This is the only spot left that hasn't been changed through the course of play. And there it is. And that was the case. The green control cube. This cube was held at the Smithsonian for decades, its purpose unknown. It wasn't until Venom agents stole it that its true purpose was revealed. We could use this if the game was going to continue. The global effect during the tactical phase was reduce the Venom leader's health, defense, or support by one. And that's an ongoing until it would become shut down by event number four. It states in the rulebook that when you collect the reward card, if the reward card is needed for the mission, determine if all players have collectively accomplished the conditions. If all players have collectively accomplished all of the conditions, then Venom has been thwarted and Freedom Squadron has won. When you win the game, if you're playing with more than one person, the UN wishes to award the most dedicated tactician with their highest distinction, the Medal of Honor, for stopping Venom's international threat. Determine which player is awarded the Medal of Honor by adding the following victory point values. The number of victory points listed on each reward card the player has earned. This includes rewards used during the course of the game, as well as unused rewards. And the Venom support values of all Venom leaders that that player has captured. So who was our greatest tactician? Our commander or player two? Let's gather up all of the commander's cards. We have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, fifteen, twenty, twenty-three. 26, 31, 33. 
33 for the commander if I did my addition correctly. And for our other player we have 2, 5, 8, 12, 14, 17, 20, 23, 25, and 27. 33 to 27. The commander had the greater victory point total, so it only made sense that they were the commander. They were the greatest tactician. Freedom Squadron has won the game and thwarted Venom. We met all four victory conditions. We got all of the control cubes and liberated Venom Island. Give you my final thoughts on the game. Starting with the rule book. The rule book is laid out very well. It is easy to follow along. Great examples of play for each section. A really nice reference on the back with every step of the way laid out for you. And a really nice glossary of terms that actually tell you the definitions of each of the words that come up either on cards or during gameplay that really clarify it. Very well put together, easy to understand rule book. The components are sufficient for the gameplay. The cards are a little thin. They're not low quality, but they're not high quality. They don't have that linen finish or a really thick core. So if you're a sleever, you'll definitely want to sleeve these cards. I'm just not someone that sleeves cards, so I play with them either way. Now I'll probably change my tone on sleeving once I put these games up for people to play when they're either staying at the Airbnb or at the future board game cafe that we're going to open. But until then, I'll continue to play unsleeved. I just like the way the cards feel as opposed to sleeved cards. The board works good for keeping everything organized. It is large, so you do need some room. And each player needs a little bit of room too. I kind of condensed this down and made the playing area really compact with the two of them side by side. But each person should have their own little play area to play their cards out. It shows you in the rule book what the play area should look like with a draw deck discard pile, used and unused rewards, and then the cards that are in play. And when you're going through combat, they show the leader up top with the cards below. You can do it any way that works for you. You don't have to go by these suggestions, but you do need some room in front of each player to play the cards out. The dice that came with the game are a good quality dice. They work just fine. I just choose to use my double sixes whenever there are non-custom dice that have custom faces on them with any game that I play. I just like the way they roll better. Also want to mention that the game comes with a ton of mission cards. So your replay value is quite high. There are a lot of different missions with varying difficulties available. And you can see that there is still a nice stack of Freedom Squadron support cards still remaining. Although I imagine a lot of them at this point are duplicates. I don't think we saw Inferno, the Devil Ray, Timberwolf, good old Troy, but there's a really nice variety of Freedom Squadron and Venom support cards. Both have really thick decks, so you don't know exactly what's coming. There's also a nice stack of Venom Leader cards that we didn't even see in the game, so you never know which of the enemies that you're going to be up against because there's so many to choose from and you're selecting them randomly. You also cannot rely on certain reward cards to show up because this is the stack of non-mission specific rewards that get thrown in randomly that we didn't even use. I think you get a lot of content for your money for this game. It's almost as if there was a base game and they had some expansions in mind and they just threw them all in because there are a lot of cards in these stacks available to really ramp up the variability when you play each playthrough. And finally the theme, I love the theme. I was one of those kids that looked in the TV guide 
and saw which cartoons were going to be on over the weekend and planned my early morning out, got my bowl of cereal and sat in front of the TV and watched tons of them. And then when the VCR was available, recorded ones that I couldn't watch at the same time and followed up my day of watching cartoons with an afternoon of watching the ones that I couldn't see live when they were playing on TV. And G.I. Joe was one of my favorites. This isn't G.I. Joe, but it's as close as you're going to get to a non-licensed version. And I actually really like the characters in this game and the variety. There's so many available that I would love to see a cartoon of these characters actually be made with the enemy of Venom as the antagonist in the cartoon. I hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. I highly recommend this. This is a really fun deck builder with dice thrown in and a little bit more tactics, especially if you're someone that's in their late 30s or older who was a fan of G.I. Joe and likes deck builders. This will fall right in place for you. I'm glad that the guy explained to me what it was about when I was at Dice Tower Con. Bought it blind, didn't look anything up about it, just on his recommendation at the booth and telling me what it was about. Bought it, and I'm extremely happy with my purchase. I have a lot of fun playing the game, and I look forward to making more videos in the future. Maybe another playthrough far on down the line. Maybe they put an expansion out. If not, I might do one with one of the more difficult scenarios that are available in the game. Until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.